her sister Edna uh, as well. Um, she's got a long road to recovery, and, and certainly we want the Lord to um, help her during that. Anyone else? Any unspoken requests? Let's take them before the Lord this morning. Lord Jesus, we love you, God. We're grateful to be here today. Thankful, God, for your blessings throughout the course of this week, God, for keeping your hand upon us, for protecting us and looking out for us, God, and God, just providing our needs. We're thankful for that today, God. And Lord, we come before you with requests, so many spoken and unspoken alike this morning, God, so many that are in need of healing virtue throughout their bodies, God, that you would lift them up, that you would just strengthen them, God, let them regain, oh God, the the uses that they need today. And God, we just pray, Lord, that you would be with those that are suffering loss today, God, so many family members that have passed away this week. And God, we're asking you for comfort. We're asking you for peace of mind, for that peace that surpasseth all understanding, Lord. God, we ask you, Lord, today that you would meet with us in this place, God, that you would just let your presence be known and felt afresh. And we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to be talking this morning about Joshua's spiritual development for leadership. And I made mention last week, um, when you start talking about being a leader or in the position of leadership, it's not one of those things that just happens overnight, or it shouldn't. Uh, leadership is preparation. You've got to, you know, I, I tell everybody the number one criteria to becoming a leader is to first become a follower. Because if you can't follow, then you certainly have difficulty in leading and you can't expect others to follow. Uh, I tell my guys all the time, you know, a lot of times we will uh, we'll have a, a task come up that it might be, hot and it might be nasty or whatever it might be and and there's times you know I I get out there with them and I don't, I'll use a shovel and and I'll do whatever now I'm, I'm not telling you I do that every day because I don't uh, but I will help them and I will do those things and they said you know man we, we just ain't used to that I said there's one thing I live by and that is, is that I'm not going to ask you to do something that I won't do and I won't do that uh, if it's something that I just totally would not do, I'm not going to ask somebody else to do it uh, or, or make somebody else do it that works with us. So that, that's the thing. We've got to learn in order to be a good leader is to be a follower first. I keep a, I've got a poster that's in my office right now, and I, and I keep it on my board there, So and I look at it pretty regular. And uh, it, it says a boss and a leader right beside each other. And a boss says you do. A leader says let us do. A boss, say, or a boss says you go and a leader says we will go. And it goes, it, it's a whole list of things down through there. And I look at that sometimes and, and I'll be honest. Yeah, I, I may be considered a boss, but... I still have to be a leader, and and there's things that we do. If 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 we lose, we lose. If we win, we win. And so those are the kind of things. You know, if we make accomplishments, it's our team. It's us that that makes accomplishments. And so you've got to prepare yourself to become a leader. And I challenge you. You know, that because God's still looking for leaders in 2024. God is still looking for people that will step out of the norm, get beyond your comfort zone. Sometimes being a leader is not comfortable, I'll be honest. Sometimes being a leader can be really uncomfortable. But God is looking for people that will step out of their comfort zone in their normal daily day-to-day uh, -day life and be what he wants you to be. The first and foremost thing is, is that we've got to understand, if God calls you, God prepares you. Our biggest excuse is, well, I can't do this, and I can't do that, and I can't speak, and I can't do all these other things. You know, no, you're right, you cannot. 
but by God's preparation and by God's calling, then you can do whatever he puts before you to do with God's help. So I challenge you, prepare yourself for leadership. Prepare to be that person. Work at it. Be that person. Step out. Make a difference. And you'll see that those things are, are, are so important. We're going to be reading today in the book of Exodus, chapter number 33. Begin reading in verse number 7. In 33, verse number 7, it said, And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass when Moses went out unto the tabernacle that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door and looked after Moses until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in, I lost my place, in his tent door. Moses was a leader. Now we're going to be talking about Joshua's development, but Joshua looked to Moses as to the things he did and, and it, it embarked upon him the, the methods. Now I'm not saying be a copycat. I, I've, I've got friends that, um, when, that were called into the ministry and began to preach and, and man, they would mimic some of these big name evangelists, I mean, down to the, the nth degree, you know, as far as how they preached and what their sounds were and their voicing and all those things. I'm not telling you to do that. I don't like to do that. I like to be my own person. But there are people in my life that after I became, uh, after I was saved and began to live for God, that i patterned myself after and I watched how they live for God and it helped me to become what I am today. Be your own person, but you've got to have that individual. Let me tell you what, our young people watch what we do. I'm telling you, they do. My little girl, she don't miss, it, it, it kills me, it kills me. Because she'll be watching her little tablet, you know, and, and I'll say something to her. I'll say, Sky, you know, you need to do this. And she just, she ain't heard a word. You know, she's just so engrossed in it, she ain't paid attention to nothing. And then I will say something to her mom. I'll say, you know, we need to go and do something. She'll say, do what? I say, girl. You can't hear when I call your name, but you listen to everything that's going on around you the whole time. You know, it's called selective hearing, which is what my wife says I have most of the time. It's a switch that we control, you know. Uh, I guess, Brad, you got one of the switches too. I can tell by Carrie shaking her head. Yeah, all right. Well, at least I ain't the only one who got the switch. Uh, no, it's, it's one of those things, you know, in all seriousness, that, that we need to have that individual that we look after. We need to have that person to pattern ourselves after. The, the people of the congregation, Moses pulled aside and he created a place to worship. Let me tell you what, don't ever expect to become a, a good leader in the house of God without worship. If we don't worship, then, then we're not going to become that leader that God wants us to be. Why? Because he says he inhabits the praises of his people. Let me tell you what. You can never be a good leader without God's presence. 
Isn't it amazing how those three words just totally changes the dynamics of what I just said? It's a lot of difference in saying, you'll never be a good leader. Versus, you'll never be a good leader without God's presence. I will never be a leader without God's presence. Why? Because I'm incapable. I'm carnal. I'm, I'm, those, I'm those things that don't add up to leadership without God's presence. How does that happen? It happens through worship. It happens through adoration unto God. It happens through submitting unto Him. Now, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of times I don't feel like it. I told Carol this morning, that I, I got up real early and I had a few things I needed to do outside and I went out there and I, I did those and I had to fix the garage door because it jumped off track and I worked on it for a little while and then I decided to wash my truck and I was doing all those things and I walked in and Man, I was pouring sweat, and I was. I said, I'm tired of being tired all the time. But my list just, it's not getting any shorter. You know, somebody's adding to my list, and it's me, I think. It's a bad thing. I can't fuss at nobody else. It's me that's adding to it. But I said, man, I'm tired of being tired all the time. Sometimes I don't feel like it. Sometimes... I don't feel like lifting my hands, but God deserves it. My land, just the feeling when I do it, to know that, that God, I don't feel like this, but you deserve it. And Moses did that. He, he, put, he made a place that worship could occur because he knew it was so important and he stood in the door and the people were watching in amazement of what Moses was, what was going to happen and then the cloud encompassed around the door as Moses went in to worship and the Bible said all those that watched him began to worship. Hey, let me tell you what. We used to be what was called, well, we called it leading the service. That was the, that was the term. You know? And that was my job most of the time was to lead service. And what that really was was become a Jesus cheerleader. It's true. Be a Jesus cheerleader. You know, Kenny, I... I I think, you know, we, we were sitting at East Rankin, I don't know, it's been a couple of weeks ago, and, and the little guys was out there playing football, and all our little cheerleaders was out there, and man, they're just giving it all that they got, and, and they got this one little cheer, uh, it says, uh, uh, Patriot fans in the stands, something, stand up and holler, I missed part of it, I don't remember what it is, but it was stand up and holler. And they they given it everything they got. And three people in the stands stand up. I wasn't one of the three. I wasn't. I was tired. I didn't want to stand up. You know? I clapped for them. Yeah, they did a good job. And they did. They do an excellent job. But I was watching the football game, Brother Danny. I wasn't, you know, I'm not that but I used to be that Jesus cheerleader that would say, come on, let's worship, let's exalt God. Hey, let me tell you what. It shouldn't take that. It shouldn't take that. No, you... Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's, it's <laughs> man, hey, let's, let's be honest. We're selfish. We're selfish. 
You know, I mean, I, I mean that's, just, that's just honesty. You know, because it's about how I feel, what kind of week I've had, what have I got to do next week, what am I thinking about, it, it, it's I, I, I. And I, I mean, I, I'm as guilty. I'm not, I'm not throwing rocks, I promise. I'm guilty. I, and, and it's all about I. But just like what Renee said, that, I mean, and that is awesome, that, that it's that opportunity that God is looking for what we can offer unto him because he's going to pour it out. He's going he's gonna to return it. You will never out-worship God for what he is going to return unto you. That will never happen. You know, it, it's, it's funny, and I know it's a little bit comical when we say it sometimes. Somebody said, you know, how was church? I said, man, it was great today. We didn't have preaching. Well, that's not the way we mean that. We got an awesome pastor that preaches awesome. But that's not what we mean. It means that God was able to take over and to minister to those that, that were in need or, or needed a touch or, or just needed uplifting or encouraging. My land. Let me tell you what. You know, I, I remember back a time when B-12 shots was the big going thing. Everybody had to have a B-12, you know, to get through the week, you know, and, and, and to energize their body. And, do that. and maybe they still do. I don't know. But, you know, that was the, the whole going, you know, man, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. I'm going to have to have a B-12. Yeah. Let me tell you what, I can't make it throughout the week without knowing that God's still present. And you know who that depends on? Me. It depends on what I do. It depends on what I say. It depends on how I react. It depends on what I want from God. And Moses created that place. And as an example, worship began to fall across the people. How many times have we sat here and somebody just out of the blue begins to get up and to walk down these aisles and, and start worshiping God. Nobody else, just one, and, and begins to worship God and begins to exalt, and then all of a sudden, what happens? It just happens. It just breaks. I will never forget, and this has been, holy moly, it's been 20 years ago more probably. Uh, we were at the United Pentecostal Church campgrounds one night, and uh, it, we were... It was during service, and, and that campground, I mean, it's, it's huge. There was probably, I don't know how many people in there, 2,000, maybe 2,500 or so folks in there. And, and it was sort of dull and dry, you know, just wasn't a whole lot going on. And, and there was a worship group up there, and they were singing and all. And all of a sudden, it was as though you could just see it starting across the tabernacle. I mean, it was just like a wave of people that just began to exalt God. Just one, two, three, four, five, all the way across. And that place erupted in worship. We had good church at night. We had no preaching. And it was awesome. It was awesome. Just by somebody obeying and saying, hey, man, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to worship anyway. And Moses led the people into worship. Verse number 11. Now forgive me, the wind. I don't know what, it, there's a certain spot right here that's perfect. Every time I turn my page, it turns it back. Uh, no matter what book I'm reading in, it always turns me one page. Uh, so if I get on the wrong one, forgive me. Verse number 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face and as what did it? yeah, and as a man speaketh unto his friend, and he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Let me tell you what. Sometimes it's hard to get here. I'm just being honest. Sometimes it's hard to get up and to get going. Sometimes it's hard to make it. But let me tell you what, it, 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 it's amusing. It, it doesn't 
That's, the, I guess, is the best word. It's amusing to me to see when the awesome presence of God falls among his people and people begin to get enveloped in worship and exalting God. You almost have to turn the lights out to get them to go home. Nobody's in a hurry to leave. Nobody wants to get away from that feeling. Why? Because not just anything can provide that feeling. I know it ain't all about feeling, but does it not feel good to be in the presence of an awesome God? Man, does it? And, and nobody wants to leave. I mean, people just want to stay where the, where the glory of God is being poured out. And the Shekinah glory. And, and that's what he said. He said, you know, everybody else has departed. Not Joshua. Joshua says, I want all of this I can get. Let me tell you what. I need all that I can get. To make it through whatever we're going to face next week. I need that much of Jesus. Carol and I sat down this morning. We were talking about um, some of the challenges uh, that we face and that we're facing now. You know, just different things, uh, medical and, and, and all. And, and we were just talking through those things. And I said, you know, I said, we take this one day at a time. We do it little by little. We're not going to change all the circumstances that surround us Overnight, they didn't get that way overnight. We're not going to change all of it overnight. But we do it one step at a time. But I'm not going to sit there and fret and worry about it and, and, and be down and out and all. That's why I need all of him that I can get. That's why I want to get to that place that they have to say, hey man, look, you ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Or if, you know, if when you leave, turn the lights out. You know, we'll lock the doors later. Is that not, would that not be awesome? Would it not be awesome to have that kind of, you know, they did that uh, down in Brownsville, uh, Florida. And, and you know, they, they had that, where they, never, they never shut the church. I mean, people were there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they did that for months. People just, just enveloped in the awesome presence of God. One of the colleges, uh, where did it just happen? Where was it? Well, that did occur, yes. That was last year uh, that it did happen in Starkville. Uh, but this was either like Ohio State or somewhere. I, I forget. I don't know. I, I may be wrong on that. But that they just had their football team actually had a worship service. And the people, all the students from the college began to get involved. And, man, they started having baptisms out there. And they just, they, I mean, they said, forget football. We're just, we're just going to have church. And they had a time. It is time for those kind of things to take place. We're sitting around watching the end time come to pass and it's almost like we can't believe what's happening. You want me to tell you how I know? Because everybody says, can you believe what they're doing in XYZ? Can you believe what's happening in Israel? Can you believe what's happening in, in Gaza? Can you believe what's happening in the Carolinas? Can you believe what's, you know, all the... Yes, I can because the Bible said that in the last days perilous times would come. He said there would be wars and rumors of wars. He said all of these things, tribulations that were going to be taking place and we're sitting here going, man, I just can't believe this is happening. Well, you better start believing that it's happening. Because we are in the last of the last days. Now, I'm not sitting here telling you that it's going to be, you know, the end's going to come next month. But I'm telling you what, we're a lot closer today than we were yesterday. We are a lot closer to the coming of the Lord than we have ever been before. 
And we've got to be ready for that. In Numbers chapter number 11, verse number 24. find it. I lost my place here. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders and it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them they prophesied and did not cease. Now Moses was very obedient because most of the time, you know, when the Lord tells us that, that he wants to do something through us, you know, we start making excuses and we give all the reasons why we can't. When the whole time, when, when the Lord impressed upon Moses to draw out the 70 elders and to get them to, to sit down, he didn't know what for. Can I tell you that everything or, or let, me, let me say it this way. Not everything that God does is just normal. What are you saying, Brother Donnie? I'm telling you that sometimes God likes to do things that are just not natural, that are not customary for us. He pulled out the 70 elders. He said, I, you know, if it had been us, we'd say, you know, why are we doing this? How long are we going to be? Are we going to have to sit here? You know, what are we waiting on? And, and Moses didn't know the answer to that. But all of a sudden, whenever he did, and he got them out and he sat down, and the Spirit of the Lord rested upon them, and then they began to testify and to prophesy and to command those things that God was saying through them and he did that, and the Bible says that he did it without ceasing. Sounds like revival to me. It sounds like the start of something awesome simply by being obedient to, to what the Lord was saying. In verse number 26, he said, But there remained two of the men in the camp, the name of the one Eldad and the name of the other Medad and the spirit rested upon them and they were of them that were written but went not out unto the tabernacle and they prophesied in the camp. The spirit of the Lord was on them. They began to speak the things that God was saying and they were telling it throughout the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. Joshua says, You gotta stop this. They're they're out doing, they're doing crazy stuff. Any of y'all ever been called crazy? I will tell you this story and I will not call names. Um, but every time I see the person, it just tickles me now. Um, probably uh da, 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 da. 35 years ago um, or so, we were having a youth revival. And man, our youth were on fire. They were excited about God and, and they were out winning folks left and right and, and, and getting people to come to church. And, and on Saturday, they would go out and they would, they would have these little flyers made up about the youth revival. And they was going and they was putting them on cars all over Morton and everything, every parking lot. They'd stick one under the windshield wipers and all that, you know. They were excited about what God was doing. And I'm telling you, it was pretty exceptional uh, to have that big of a youth group that was really on fire for God. And so they were, they were passing them out. Well, they went to a particular parking lot here in town where there was a, a particular store that's no longer there now. And um, they were passing them out. Or they were putting them under the cars. And this little lady... Um, come out, she was just furious because these kids were trying to get people to go to that church. She was mad about it. And she went out there in the parking lot and she would take them off the windows and she'd crumple them up. 
throw them in the trash. She was mad because they were excited about Jesus. She went to a church. She attended. You know, and I thought, how can you be mad about what God's doing to a group of young people? What's that make you mad about? It wasn't because they were putting it on the car, but it wasn't her car. That wasn't what it was. It was just that she didn't like the fact that God was moving and not around her. You know, it's a shame that we get all ruffled up because God's blessing our brother or our sister or somebody else besides me. Remember that selfish thing I said earlier? You know, well, I don't know why God's blessing them. Hey, well, I don't, you know, hey, heap blessings upon them. Pray blessings over them. Pour it out, God. Maybe it'll come my way. Maybe it'll wash over it. Some spillage might occur. You ever heard that song, Fill My Cup, Lord? You ever wondered why, you know, and I remember my mom worked at the Gulf Cafe a long, long time ago when I was a little kid and and I remember, you know, man, every time they bring coffee out, they had coffee in a little bitty saucer or, or a cup and you know, sitting in a little bitty saucer. And, and they always served coffee with a cup on a saucer everywhere they went, every, every single time. I always thought, well, that's a waste of dishes. Well, no, it wasn't. Because you know what would happen? There'd be a little bit of spillage that would get out on the side. And I've seen them old men sitting around the table. Once that cup got empty, they'd take that saucer and they'd eat up there and they'd flip it up and they'd get every last drop out of it. Does he? He still does. Yeah. You know, don't lose the spillage. Sometimes it's the spillage that, that, that just seals the deal. Let it happen. Let it go. But Joshua was saying, Moses, you got to stop them. They're out there doing things. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? He says, Are you envious? Are you jealous? We have that conversation at my house pretty regular now. I have to ask my oldest, are you jealous? And she'll say, yes. I said, that's okay. It's all right. Yeah, but Moses asked Joshua, said, are you jealous for my sake of what they're doing? And he went on and he said, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Moses said, I wish everybody was like this. I wish everybody was doing that. And Joshua was wanting to say, what was Moses doing? He was teaching Joshua a very valuable lesson. A very valuable lesson. And he went on and Moses Gat him into the camp, and he and the elders of Israel, and there went forth a wind from the Lord and brought quails from the sea and let them fall by the camp as it were a day's journey on this side, as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Moses was showing Joshua, son, you don't need to be jealous. God will provide for you, but everybody ought to be doing that. Everybody ought to be excited about Jesus. You say, well, I can't help it that I'm not. No. But do something about it. Put forth an effort. Get out of your comfort zone. Test God. You say, what? 
That sounded just like Skylar when I did that. I'll say something. She'll go, say what? I say, don't say what me. Say what? Test God. He said, try the spirits to see if it be of God. Test him and see. He's not going to be mad about it. Try him out. Get to know that he will do those things that he said he would do. Prove that he will come through just like he said every single time. Give him an opportunity to do. Just because you're stepping out to be a leader, just because God's calling you into leadership, doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. That is baloney. I made more state, mis, mistakes than I can count. And I've had to experience some really valuable lessons. Not all that I liked. But Moses was teaching Joshua in order to be what God wants you to be, it don't necessarily always look natural, normal, ordinary, none of those things. Sometimes God works in mysterious ways for our benefit. So let me tell you, don't knock it. Oh, I've heard people say, yeah, well, they go to church on Sunday and then they do blah, 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 blah. You know, ain't none of my business. Not my business. But the one thing I know is that just like Moses told Joshua, I would that everybody would do these things for God. If I'm going to be a leader, I need somebody to follow. Be careful sometimes. You know, I, t I tell people, man, there's been some of those that, you know, I see them on the television and, boy, it looks good there for about two minutes. And then they don't look so good anymore. That's not what I want to follow. But I want to know, he said that our spirit will lead and guide and direct us in paths that we need to go. So to become a leader, let's be a good follower. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we love you. God, we're grateful today for your word. Thankful today, God, for an opportunity, Lord, to, to truly be a leader, God. And God, that we might lead others to the cross. And God, that we would find a, a way, O oh Lord, to reach the lost in a dying world. Help us, God, that, that we pick good leaders, Lord, to, to follow after and to fashion after, God. And, and to do the things right in the right way, in the right time, the right place. God, we give you praise today, Lord. Lead, guide, and direct us, Lord, we ask you. In Jesus' awesome and mighty name we pray. Amen.